Hello and welcome to this presentation introducing you to Year 8, the Year of Choices. I'm Mrs Cowan, one of the Deputy Heads, and later in this presentation you'll hear from Mr Chance, the other Deputy Head, as well as your doper, Mr Bateman. This presentation will be going through a number of different elements that are important as you are moving through Year 8. We will talk about uh, the introduction to pathways and thinking about GCSEs, as well as the importance of literacy, numeracy and setting great learning routines and habits from the beginning of this year. We'll touch on the benefits and perils of social media as well as the teenage challenge as your child is moving in towards those teenage years, as well as communication and how we work together as part of the home and school partnership. We will also introduce you to the Year 8 Parent Handbook. So to start us off, a short video. Okay, sit in that chair. All right, here's the deal. Marshmallow, for you. You can either wait, and I'll give you another one if you wait, or you can eat it now. When I come back, I'll give you two, another one. So then you'll have to. But stay in here and stay in the chair till I come back, okay? okay. All right. So I'm gonna go do something and then I'll come back. It's yummy. Oh, it's really good. video is just highlighting that actually this is about the long game this is about that delayed gratification that waiting um, the work through that period of time when actually students perhaps just want to get to the end 
and be making those choices and moving forward. But it is about supporting them into sort of sitting it through, going through um, the, the year, working their way through in all their subjects and enjoying it, perhaps slowing down time a little bit to make sure that they're getting into those good work habits, those great routines now in order to maximise the achievements that they can be seeing later on towards the end of year 11 with GCSE results. It's not about rushing through, it's not about finishing things quickly, it's about doing them really well from the very, very start. So in terms of pathways, um, you will be getting a lot more information uh, along with the pathways wink at in the spring term and that's when the main pathways process starts. We have a very comprehensive structured programme for all students and parents and we'll take you through the process, the conversations, the discussions and the choices that students will have to make. You can start having those discussions now with your son or daughter and you can start getting them thinking about what their interest and their enjoyment is, which subjects they particularly like to do, um, which subjects they get on well with because when it comes to the choices we will be talking with students about the, the reasons behind their choices and what they want to do and really what influences that decision. So we will encourage them not to be following the choices of their friends because just because their friends want to do a subject doesn't mean that they should, although we know that students like to be with their friends in classes. Um, but that shouldn't be what informs their decisions for which GCSEs they then go on to study. Similarly, it shouldn't come down to which teachers they want to be working with. Um, we know that um, they often develop very good relationships with their class teachers and they want to continue studying subjects because they think they're all we believe that they wish to have that teacher again in year nine but again that doesn't necessarily happen so they need to really make sure that they're interested in enjoying subjects that they make a choice of but it also links into their career aspirations and depending on which routes that they want to follow what they might want to be doing perhaps at college but if in doubt, keeping the doors open, because we all know, and I'm sure um, yourselves included, the decisions, the thoughts you had about what you might want to go on and do at the age of 11, perhaps are very different to those thoughts that were at 16, 18, 20 plus, and even perhaps what you're doing now. So in terms of aspirations, it is about keeping those doors open so that those choices can be made at a later date. And we work with students to have a real broad balanced curriculum throughout their time here at Wilden in order to make sure that that happens. But we will be taking you and your child through the whole of the pathways process in the spring term with a lot more information to follow at that stage. Now, in terms of learning routines and habits, it really is crucial that students get into that. And now they've been with us for a year, they know the routines here at school, they know what it's like to have their timetable, they know about self-study, because that's now being set in all of their subjects. They're very much used to using Google Classroom, but it is about setting up perhaps more that day-to-day -day habit. And having just come back from six weeks summer holiday, it's really important that we start the ground running with those from now. So we want all students to feel safe and secure, to know that they've got um, a place that they can work at home, to know that there is time that they can spend with you as a family so they're not missing out on that when they are spending that time completing any self-study that they are doing. It is about developing that sense of responsibility. So they will have had that last year in year seven in terms of wearing their uniform in school, handing their self-study in and how they conduct themselves, they are responsible for themselves. So perhaps it's starting to develop that sense of responsibility a bit more at home. Um, have they designed themselves a self-study timetable? Have they thought about what subjects are gonna be set on which day and when they're due in? So that they're starting to take responsibility for how they spend their time and how they they choose to which day they choose to complete work that's set. That might also be about other responsibilities around the home. Are there little jobs that they could be taking care of and supporting you with at home on a weekly basis? Perhaps that's helping out with um, either getting meals or clearing up after meal times, washing up um, or loading or unloading the dishwasher, etc. So that they are starting to get into that routine at both in terms of home and helping, but as well as their schoolwork. That really does help developing the idea of work skills and time management and knowing when they've planned enough time in to do things. And that ties in with a timetable for their self-studies. So just a few tips here, and some of those I'm sure you're already doing. There might be one or two there that, that perhaps just to get back into that routine from this September. So working with a daily schedule and having a regular bedtime is so important. I think we all know that in the holiday times, um, actually if bedtime starts slipping, 
actually we start seeing a change in mood in our in our children we can see that they become a bit more ratty t- at times or um, perhaps it's harder to get them up in the morning so starting to get that regular bedtime back in is really really important making sure that study time as we just said um, is part of a daily routine so it might be having a timetable of each day which subject self-study your child is going to be completing so they know they've got enough time to do it it's not that frantic rush the day before it's due in to get it quickly finished and that allows them the time to really make sure it's a good piece of work they're proud of that they are making they are putting in the time the consideration they're able to review it and read it and correct it themselves to really make sure it's the best it can be and then of course it's really really crucial that they have time off as well it isn't all about schoolwork it's about making sure they've got that opportunity to catch up with their friends to have some rest and recuperation time to go out and do other activities because that's what really enriches our lives and that's really important as well it might be useful to add any deadlines for school assignments and exams onto your family calendar so that you've got that and everybody in the household is then aware of what might be coming up when and if in doubt it's all about practice and we we call our exams at every stage practice exams because the more we do things the more we practice the better we come at this and the same goes for learning routines and habits if you miss a beat if you drop something if something gets handed in late then it's it's not to worry too much just start afresh and get back into that habit and process and encouraging your son and daughter to do the same now literacy and numeracy you will have heard about i'm sure about the importance of them and they are really crucial because they underpin every other subject here in school. Um, The amount of literacy obviously is very fluent, we read English, but how we read and how we read for different subjects does vary. And to be able to access the material in every subject that's taught, students need that level of literacy and understanding. Numeracy is in many, many subjects here in school as well, from um, obviously maths, but science, geography, design technology, they all have high levels of numeracy as part of their subjects. So it's really important that this is the time to make sure that those skills are as high and as good as they can be. So what we'd really say is please keep encouraging your child to read. It might be something that they haven't felt as much love for, perhaps over recent months. Maybe it's something that's become harder to do since they left primary school, but it's something that's so it's so important and it really does help them um, in many, many ways other than the ones that you usually expect. It improves vocabulary, it improves their confidence in reading and accessing materials in their subject areas, but it also really helps them to access um, Um, various different ideas, creativity, thoughts and ideas that they can bring into so many of their subjects they work with here in school. Do sit and discuss new and unusual words with them. Use internet resources to help with that if you need to as well. And encourage them to write because that's the other skill that they're going to be reliant on, again, in every subject across school. So encouraging them to actually take some time on their handwriting to make sure that they are used to writing things down. Um, we, We often see students that are very strong verbally but don't know how to approach putting that pen to paper. So do encourage your son or daughter to make that step as well as you as you move throughout this year. In terms of numeracy, it's always about being positive and I think sometimes it can be very easy to slip into perhaps your own feelings about maths if you don't feel as happy or as comfortable or if your experience at school wasn't so positive. But please keep that positivity with your child. Read through a problem with them, encourage them to use their notes from class and go through any worked examples. There's also a plethora of different um, apps and websites that the maths department recommend using to help with students. So encourage your child to look at those websites websites for help as well. Um, Demonstrate using maths to solve some problems, perhaps if you're in shops with them, just asking them to tell you which one's the best value for money or how much change you should be getting, starting to build that into just little conversations you're having Um, and just make sure they can still use their timetables. They were fluent in them in primary school, I'm sure, and it's something that they practiced so, so often as part of their primary school maths lessons, but it's something that is Um, The rest of their maths at GCSE level, at Kise Shireen GCSE, is reliant on the times tables. And if they haven't been practicing them recently, certain ones of those might have slipped out of their memory. So it's always good to make sure that they can still do those. 
Ask your child to show you how their scientific calculator works. And if in doubt, if you don't feel as confident with maths or as positive about it, ask your child to tell you what they know. And, and actually, most of the time, you'll find that they, they do know their answers. It's more about their confidence. And, and that's the more the sort of key with numeracy, about building up your child's confidence that they can do this. And if there's something that they're really stuck on, how and where to get help. There is always help available in school as well. So encourage them to come back in and speak to their teacher. So you're now at the stage where undoubtedly your um, your new teenager to be, if they're not already, um, is uh, has access to mobile phone and, and all the other things that go with that in terms of um, devices. And therefore, they'll be getting more and more involved in, in social media if they're not already. The age of 13 is the limit for most, uh, the lower age limit for most social media apps. Um, and so the pressure will be on for them to share if they're not already, for them to be on those um, social apps, because clearly um, our young people can't live without contacting each other online 24-7. So it's really important that um, we are preparing them to be responsible around social media, um, how best to use it, uh, to use it for its benefits, but also make them aware of the perils and the dangers involved in being involved in social media. So undoubtedly, um, your young person will have their phone, will have had it a while now, um, and they'll be asking you more and more apps as they're pinging. It's really important that we're aware of what apps do, um, what types of apps are out there and try and keep up. And it's really hard to do that. Um, there's always updated device on our website. Please go to the parent members area. Um, the username uh, and password is on the screen. And you'll get advice and guidance on social media um, and, and how to, to go through that with your young person. But also we'll be sending out every now and then via our own social media sites, so, so via Twitter uh, or, or Instagram, the things to watch out in terms of, of um, apps as new ones appear, develop, start new trends and cause more concerns. In terms of online safety, it's really important that you have an open dialogue um, with your um, with your young person, with your child at home. It's really good to, to start dialogue nice and early and continue that dialogue with them. Be really open about how you are going to monitor their online presence and what they're up to. Um, the, 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 the phrase team works really, really well. So T talking about staying on safe online. Have open, trusting dialogue. Tell them that you're going to be checking their phone um and, and you know you you like access to it talk to them about what it means by staying safe online and that safeguarding is really really important um talk to them about um the dangers of talking to strangers you don't know for putting pictures out from your own bedroom or, or sharing details about where you go to school or, or or the street you live in or the area you live in it's really important that dialogue is is open Explore their online world together. What are they up to? What sort of apps are they using? Have a look at the, their phone. Get them to talk you through what these apps are and what they do. Um, if that open trusting dialogue's there early, it just continues. And agree rules around what is okay and what is not okay. Um, what are you expecting from them in terms of their online um, presence and, and, and footprint? And make sure that they agree with you what is safe and what isn't safe and that they stick by that. And that also, if they make a mistake, that they can come to you with it for support and guidance um, ra rather than perhaps to, to be told, I told you so if something goes wrong. And, and manage your family's settings and controls. It's always worth reviewing and renewing. Um, close down the Wi-Fi doesn't mean you close down 4G um, and those sorts of things. So it's really important that you are managing your family's controls and settings. So the things that they do have access to is age appropriate um, and isn't going beyond their years and putting them at risk. So there's lots to consider um, around online safety, and I'm sure most of you already work well into the world of that, but it is worth checking, updating, um, and looking at online advice and guidance. Um, CAMS have a brilliant website that has access to a number of things, and online safety and supporting um, teenagers online is one of those things. It's a brilliant website, but there are loads of, loads of um, things you can access online. Um, the Vodafone um, Parenting Magazine, online parenting magazine is a very good go-to resource as well. So the Teenage Challenge. Um, 
as, as they as they're going into to their teenage years if they're not already all sorts of changes are happening all sorts of pressures are on them at school um, to, to stay in to go out uh, pressures online um, pressures to fit in but it should be a really joyous time again open open dialogue is is the best way through this preparing talking to to your child about what is coming up in terms of their body and changes in the near future and how um, you can all go through that together and support each other through it. So um, prepare for a large amount of eye rolling, emotional outbursts and thoughts of running away. And that is just us, the parents. But, um, but I think joking aside, it's really worth you having conversations nice and early this year about what, what's coming ahead um, and how you can prepare for that as a family. There are lots of things that the teenager has to consider. Um, relationships, um, what is a healthy relationship um, and, and trying to find your way through the perils of, of open relationships. Um, being pressurized for, pressure for your parents, you've settled in school now, we're gonna take those next step. Trying to fit in or, or trying to be different, um, trying to, to accept others and understand others um, and trying to balance work, life, school activities and friendship groups is really, really difficult. And what will happen is our teenagers, our, your children, will all start reacting to that in very, very different ways. Um, that Kevin, the teenager sketch from way back when is, is relevant and we do see that. But I think it's really important to understand that they're all very different. Um, and again, open dialogue and keeping, and keeping a healthy chat going about what's coming up ahead um, can really help and support through these teenage changes. You're going to see the hashtag it's not okay uh, an awful lot um, this year on, on our social media pages around the school on letterheads and all sorts of things and it's really it's our way of, of, of supporting students in making raising awareness and supporting each other in in things like how we treat each other being kind and also to understand the whole agenda and the, the quite rightly around sexual violence and harassment in schools but not only that, about um, acceptance, uh, diversity, and we'll be using it as a as a as a precursor and a fronter and a and a um, and a hashtag to raise awareness around things that aren't okay. But also then to to bring up and challenge uh, students when they are getting it wrong. Say, look, it's not okay to do this. It's not okay to to share nudes it's not okay to ask anybody else to share nudes those sorts of things and and as we go through school the hashtag it's not okay will become really prevalent um, in terms of us campaigning say look let's do the right thing here um, let's get things right and understand what's wrong and what's going to happen um, if you get these things wrong and the impact that it has on other people so you'll see a lot of the hashtag it's not okay um, appearing through the year um, assemblies, tutor time, MSS lessons on curriculum and around the school. So um, when, when these sorts of things come out, have a look at them and, and talk to your young people at home about what it is that they're doing at school connected to the hashtag, it's not okay. Finally, for me, just want to talk briefly about the impact of attendance. It goes without saying that being in school in front of the teachers is the most important thing in terms of learning. Um, students who, whose attendance is less than 90%, so that's one day off a fortnight, average one to two grades lower in the final GCSEs at Wilden. And that's, that's been the case um, uh, over the last couple of years as well. So it's really important that students are in school, are in front of their teachers and they're learning because feedback face-to-face -face in the moment is the most important feedback of all. So students being away from school, is an issue for the student and in terms of the outcomes, but also socially and pastorally as well. So much is gonna be going on at school this year now that we've got everybody back, it would be a real shame to miss out some of those opportunities. We won't approve absence as a school unless it's exceptional and extremely exceptional circumstances. If you need um, to request for, for that, you can do that through the website via the, the attendance pages. Um, but if there's an issue getting your young person, your child into school, if there's, if there are problems, be it pastoral or medical, then we can help. And we've got great resources to do that. Um, so please get in contact um, with, with head of year, um, a tutor or anybody at the school, and we can support um, if there are any issues in terms of attendance. Thank you. Good evening, and for the last part of the evening, it's over to me just to finish off um, 
the presentation. I want to give everyone a big welcome to year eight. I hope you all had a lovely summer holiday. And there's only a few more things I'm just going to go through following on uh, from the previous speakers uh, to get us ready for year eight. Uh, I want to start off with talking about communication and the importance of communication, which I know uh, we're all aware of anyway, but just a few reminders of, of the best people to communicate with. Um, I think I warn certainly all your students and probably you guys as well at the start of year seven, how quickly time goes at Wilden. And we're already at the beginning of year eight, a whole year down. So uh, this year, trust me, will go even quicker. And for many reasons, year eight is the most important year for communication because we're completing the pathways, which has been spoken about already. Uh, so sort of more on that after Christmas, really. Um, but remember, I'm only as good and the school's only as good as the information we know. So we will try our best to communicate with you in a timely fashion with anything we might need to pass on. But please, please do get in touch with us if you need anything at all. You'll be surprised at the support we can offer. I'll outline some of that in a second. Um, Usually, if there's a subject-specific question, then please do contact your son or daughter's subject teacher. Um, if there's a pastoral question, the tutor's probably the best bet, unless it's something you think is a little bit more serious, or if there's an issue that's covering all uh, of the subjects, or certainly affecting your son or daughter in a bigger way, then that's where myself and Mr. Clissold can come in. I think it's also just worth reminding you that Mr. Clissold and I are both teachers, so we're not always available uh, when you ring, but we'll certainly always get back to you, or the lovely ladies and student services can help out as well. Linked to communication, we of course have our parent student app as well, the Insight app. Um, so a lot of you use this already. So I know I'm just sort of reminding you of, of how things ran in year seven. Um, but this is a one stop shop that can give you information on attendance, on their achievements, on any behavior issues, timetables, parent information. I mean, you can read that slide for yourself. Um, we do need to make sure we've got your up to date email address and a little plea from me if anyone's moved over the summer or, or certainly moved since they started year seven. Can you please make sure just generally? Generally, that your con contact details are kept up to date with the school, that mobile numbers, emails, and things like that, so that we can always get in touch with you. If there are any issues with the app, um, then um, you can contact our IT support team who can help you with lost passwords or if the app isn't working and things like that. Um, the only other thing I'll say about the app is it gets updated at the end of the day when our registers and things close in school. So if you ring in during the day and we make a change, it won't always immediately come up on the app. Um, if you call in your son or daughter ill, for example, they might show as, as N for the whole day um, and then the ill will go on later because um, it can take a little while to, to update. But it's certainly quite good um, for the day-to-day -day stuff while your son or daughter is in school. So next, I just want to talk a little about our homeschool partnership. And again, this is nothing new, but a few reminders for the start of a new academic year. Uh, it very much is a three-way partnership between us as the school, yourselves as parents, but also the students as well. And as they're a bit older now, and I'm sure you're very aware that they are teenagers uh, or certainly becoming teenagers at home, um, you know, they have a big part to play in their day-to-day -day and also making sure things are, are running smoothly. Um, linked to that, we do have uh, a lot of uh, support available. Uh, we really want to work together. Um, these are just some of the things that you can see on the slide here that we can use to support our students if needed. As a partial team, we want everyone to feel safe, be happy and make the progress in every aspect of their school life and beyond. If you are worried about anything with regards to your child, please do contact us. Let the tutor know, let myself know. Uh, but the more we know, the best we can support you. And there are some dates on the slide there for our wink evenings, uh, which focus on various things. There's certainly um, the supporting your teenager one, I know is often very popular with parents. As we get towards the end, um, you know, the relationships and sex education often is a good one to have the information before maybe necessarily you need to have some of those conversations with your students if you think they're a bit young at the moment and of course the pathways one in the middle there as well uh, which is very keen for year eight um, but as I said there'll be more there was more information earlier on pathways and certainly more to come uh, throughout the next academic year. In terms of uh, the homeschool partnership you know this is especially true when it comes to everyday things um, that we expect to take and take for granted as factors that can make a big difference in students' lives. It's important we do work together and get little things right because the little things really do add up and we're a great believer in that here. So although we might, you know, obviously want our students to do really well in their subjects, English, math, science, um, or the day-to-day -day things, the little things that add up to that. So we always appreciate your support with things and, and also encouraging those positive attitudes to learning um, that really help the students learn. We want uniform to be exceptional for important, uh, for example, if they're 
there are any issues with getting the correct uniform or any issues with that at all, please do contact me and let me know. And attendance, as mentioned before, is crucial. Um, but if there is a barrier uh, to attendance or your child coming to school or for whatever reason, whatever it may be, then we want to support you and find solutions to that. And there are lots of solutions available. You know, there are students, for example, that ha have not necessarily followed full timetables uh, while we ease them back in for medical procedures or, or things like that. So again, just communicate and just let us know and, and there are things we can do. I'm always, as I've said before, incredibly proud of my year groups and this year group in particular and all the achievements, especially considering what they went through in year seven and what they went through in year six at their primary schools. And in lockdown, you know, that period really showed me how motivated they were, not only in their self-study, but also in the things they got up to to help others and participate. Um, so I hope this continues into this academic year. It also makes me reflect on how they always represent us in the community. Our, our values are not just for place during the school day and and I'm a great believer that school is not just about the academic side of things, as important as that is. It's about t um, teaching and educating young people about life and about what they're going to be like as adults in the community in only a few years' time. Um, so as parents, we'd obviously appreciate your support with that. And um, if there's any concerns about anything that's happening in the community, please do again communicate with us uh, and we can help support with that. Um, any questions or concerns really it is just get in touch i think i've had a couple in year seven hopefully fewer now where lovely parents are probably watching this right now so you know who you are have said oh i'm sorry to bother you or oh i know you've got more important things to worry about but as the director of progress and achievement you know my job is literally to support students in their progress and achievement and the things that get in the way of that are not always in the classroom so please do just drop me a line it's always worth just letting me know and i'll be very honest with you if there, if, if there is things i can do if there's not things i can do um you know come straight to me and, and ask the questions i would say that you know some of the information that's put up on social media for example isn't always that accurate so just ask the question and we can let you know uh, what it is that we're able to do or not do So lastly, on the homeschool partnership, I just want to talk about behaviours for learning and emphasise these in particular. Um, we believe that success, successful Wilden students will display all of these behaviours for learning consistently across their time here at the school. Uh, these behaviours are a thread that runs through all aspects of learning and are common, lang and are common language with regards to learning and behaviour. Um, we've used these previously, but there's more of an emphasis on this year, and these behaviours for learning will form the basis of feedback through monitoring and reports, the WOD you receive, as well as drive expectations with regards to standards both in and out of lessons. So um, we have, based on parent feedback, uh, amended the WOD, and you'll see that with the first WOD that comes home this term. And for each subject, if there is, um, you know, in old money, what we would have called an inconsistent or something like that, you will see that in a new way now. And it'll be linked to one of these behaviours for learning that you can read on screen screen which are pretty comprehensive and give you will hopefully give you as well as students more importantly a clearer understanding of where it is we think they need to improve either in lessons or outside of lessons uh, in order to meet the standards we expect and to achieve in the long run um, so that sort of brings me to the end of our presentation. A link to this link that was sent out, um, hopefully you've all received as well, a copy of our new Year 8 Parent Handbook. Uh, this, as it says on the slide, is a comprehensive guide for day-to-day -day information. Um, it's been created to guide you through all the questions and all you need to know and all the information regarding Year 8. Um, in it, you'll find guidance on who to go to with concerns, when key events are happening, uh, amongst a whole wealth of other valuable information. Um, so the curriculum areas in the handbook have been updated to include ways you can support your child's learning and ideas to enrich their studies outside the classroom and uh, we would recommend that you spend a bit of time exploring these opportunities with your child in the coming weeks and then keep the handbook close at hand uh, throughout the year so um, thank you so much for watching this presentation I can't believe we're a year down or about to start another year um, Mr Clissold and I are very excited about the year ahead um, and our year eight motto in case you haven't seen it on letters or from me at the end of year seven already is follow your own path which i think links to a lot of what we've spoken tonight really well already um, it is about students discovering more about themselves about starting to follow their own way about doing what's right for them especially when it comes to pathways rather than what's right, right for their friends and things like that it's such an important year in many ways but just to emphasize again you know if there are any questions if there are any concerns please do come and speak to me or mr clissold or the tutors or the subject teachers let us know and we can guide you through it so thank you once again for your support um, i hope you have a lovely rest of your september uh, and you know how to get hold of me if you need to goodbye <laughs>